Hi everyone and welcome to this explainer video on the DSCR, the LLCR and the PLCR. These are the three key ratios that one looks at when sizing debt, specifically project finance debt. So what do they mean? What are they all about? And how do they work together? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing in this video. Now, you might recall if you've been a long time financial modeling podcast listener or been looking at my blog posts that the DSCR is the debt service coverage ratio. And it really measures a project or company's ability to service its debt, any principal or interest that it owes in a single period. And it looks at the cash flow available, the actual cash available to service the debt. And it looks at the, the debt service that's required, the principal and interest. And doesn't really look at the total debt outstanding. Of course, that might impact your principal or interest that's being paid. But, you know, in a sculpted scenario that that might not necessarily correlate. And it just looks at the ability in a single period to service the debt. But what about the, the total ability to service a debt over the lifetime of a project? What if our project or, or company is quite cyclical in nature? And, you know, one period, the revenues and cash flow is really high. And in the next period, it doesn't have enough cash to service the debt. Well, that's why we look at the LLCR or the loan life coverage ratio. Now, the loan life coverage ratio looks at the ability for a company to service its debt over the entire life of the loan. Now, a loan might be anywhere from one year to 20 years, depending on you know, what type of debt it is, um, what the debt is for, etc. Now, the third ratio, the project life coverage ratio, is often misunderstood. But the reason we have a look at it is because over the lifetime of a project, one might want to do certain things with that debt. One might, to re one might want to refinance it or restructure it, or perhaps uh, a project is delayed, or there might be a significant um, issue with the project that delays revenue or interrupts revenue or cash flow flow for some time. And that's why we also have a look at the project life coverage ratio. Now, the project life coverage ratio looks at the cash flows available to a project or a company over the entire project life, which is typically a contracted period of perhaps up to 20 or 30 years. Typically, the loan life will be less than the project life. So if the numerator for both the loan life cover ratio and the project life cover ratio is the, the net present value of cash flows available, for the LLCR, it will have a look at cash flows available for the entire life of the loan. But for the PLCR, it will have a look at cash flows available for the entire life of the project. And if the project is longer than the life of the loan, which, which it is in 99.9% .9 of cases, then your PLCR will be greater because the denominator for both of those equations is the same. The denominator is the outstanding balance of debt. Now for the DSCR, the denominator is just your debt service in a single period, interest and principal, and your numerator is the cash flow available to service that debt in that period. Now, why don't we take the net present value of that? Well, we are looking in the period. We're assuming that we are in the period. So the net present value of the cash flow available in the period today and the actual cash flow available are the same, right? They're, they're, they're not discounting it. A hundred rand or a hundred dollars today is worth a hundred dollars today. Let's delve into these ratios and see how they are calculated in an example model. Now, just in case you haven't visited the Financial Modeling Podcast website and blog, we have detailed articles on what is debt sculpting, what is a project life cover ratio and how is it calculated, and what is a loan life cover ratio and how is the LLCR calculated. Now, let's take a look at the model. Now, what we can see over here is that the outputs make sense. The DSCR, the minimum is 1.58 times, the LLCR is higher. The PLCR, let's go and actually calculate it over here. I haven't put it in. So we're going to say min, but if it's not equal to zero, because we don't include periods where the PLCR is zero. So we can say min where it's not zero, or I can just go and select all the PLCR periods. So it's the min of all of those periods over there. And we can see that the minimum is 2.2 times. And the average is simply the average of all the PLCRs. And we can see it's going to be skewed by this very high number at the end, which I'm going to explain now. The average is, is quite high. So let's go and have a look at why this is the case. Well, we can see here that 
the drawdown in our initial period is that 38 million. Now we've calculated a very simple amortization here where the principal and interest is the same in each period. It's about 3.8, 3.9 million. We can see that over here in each period, the total debt payment is the same, the principal and interest, and that amortizes our debt nicely down to zero. So the project cash flow is the 6 million starting off with, but increasing by 2% per annum. So it's already increased by 2% for the next year. And we say we've got 6.1 million and we're gonna divide it by roughly the 3.9 million over there to calculate the debt service coverage ratio. Can we cover our debt in a single period? And we see we can, the number over there is 1.58 times. Now the loan life cover ratio takes the discount of all of the cash flows over the loan life, discounts them to today and divides it by the loan balance outstanding, which is 38 million. And we can see that when we calculate that over here, it comes to 1.97 times. The project life cover ratio discounts all the cash flows over the project life. Now, if you remember, the project runs for quite a few years longer than the loan life. We can see that here, the loan ends in 2042, the project ends in 2047. So the discount of all of the cash flows over the project life will be higher than the discount of all of the cash flows of the loan life. You can see that just by having a look at these two columns and therefore the PLCR is higher. The denominator is the same, the outstanding balance of the loan brought forward. We can therefore see in this graph what the ratios look like. The debt service coverage ratio increases per annum. It just increases basically by that 2%. The LLCR is also increasing. But can you see how the jaws are closing? They get closer and closer together. Why is that? Well, as you approach the end of the loan, the outstanding balance of the loan becomes closer and closer to the actual cash flow. You can see it here, the outstanding loan balance in the final period, 6.9 and then 3.5. And we already said our total payment per period is 3.9, obviously higher because we still need interest to accrue on that balance. So if our total balance is very similar to the payment and our cash flow is actually equal to our discounted cash flow over the entire loan life period because we're in the final period of the loan, we can see that that's going to be very close to the debt service coverage ratio. Why is it still higher? Well, we're taking into account the previous, the opening balance of the loan, which doesn't include that interest that has been accrued. The project life coverage ratio becomes almost exponential. And the reason for that is that we are taking into account all of these additional cash flows over the project life while the loan balance is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, resulting in the final project life coverage ratio of 13 times, where we discount all of these cash flows and we divide it by the 3.5 million outstanding debt balance. That's an example of how all of these ratios come together in terms of helping us size debt and understand how we can service debt, both in a single period, over the life of the loan, and over the life of a project.